Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputin, and this is the GPD Win, which is a little device that looks sort of like a handheld game system, and it basically is, but it's also a full-fledged Windows computer. So in addition to having these gaming buttons up here and a 5.5 inch 720p display, you've got these uh, the QWERTY keyboard, some function buttons, and everything that you need to run Windows software, and it ships with Windows 10. It comes from a company called GPD, which has been selling Android-based handheld game systems for a couple of years, and this is the first real Windows model, and it's available for about three $340, and you can find information on how to buy that at lilliputing.com and in the links to this YouTube video or the description of this YouTube video. On the back, you can see here we've got a couple of extra gaming buttons in addition to what we saw on the front, including uh, left and right shoulder buttons, two on each side. There's a headset jack, full-size USB 3.0 port, a micro SD card slot, and a mini HDMI port, as well as a USB Type-C port, which is used for charging, and it comes with this sort of phone-style adapter. And even though it, uh, it's basically a full-fledged computer, it has the kind of hardware you'd expect from an inexpensive laptop, it uses that phone-sized adapter. On the bottom, there's a switch here which actually lets you control the fan. So it's got an Intel Atom low-power processor, but it can generate a fair amount of heat when you're doing gaming. And so you can turn the fan on, set it to sort of medium-high, or set it to high. The fan noise gets louder and louder the higher up you go, but if you're playing games listening through the headphones or the speakers, you hopefully won't notice too much of that, and it keeps the system from overheating. Speaking of noise, we've got these uh, speakers here on the side in a sort of awkwardly located position so that if you're holding it like this playing games, you might cover up the speakers and muffle the sound, but you can sort of get used to not doing that. And the quality of the speakers isn't really stellar anyway, so you're probably going to want to plug in headphones if you wanted to, uh, to get high quality audio anyway. Under the hood, it's got an Intel Atom X7 8700 quad-core Bay Trail processor, 4 gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabytes of storage, and as you saw, it does have micro SD card slot and USB ports if you wanted extra storage. It's got a touchscreen display, which looks pretty good from most angles, and this keyboard is a little difficult to type on. It's nice to have if you want to enter usernames and passwords or just a couple of small things at a time. I wouldn't really want to use it for typing out term papers or long emails, but it's, it's nice to have the option, I guess. So let's go ahead and, for instance, just open up a little YouTube video. I'll show you gaming in a moment because I think that's what most people are interested in. I just want to show you that you really can use this for anything that you could use a computer for. It's just like a very tiny laptop. So we've got a little video playback from YouTube. You can also use it for Office or you know, Word, Excel type things. You could use it for web browsing. You could use it for uh, just about anything. But media playback seems like something that you're likely to do with a five inch screen or five and a half inch screen. So again, the viewing angles look pretty good no matter how you hold it, so that's nice. And you can tilt the screen back and hold it like this if you want, or flip it forward. In terms of the audio, you can get pretty loud. This is only about halfway up, but it's very sort of high on the treble. And here's what happens when you hold it playing games. So you sort of want to learn to hold it so that you're not covering those up. Now, if you wanted to, uh, instead of trying to use that keyboard, you could plug in something to the USB port. So I've got a little adapter here for wireless keyboard and mouse. And as I said, pretty much anything you can do with Windows, you can do with this. So Now, I haven't really configured Kodi here. I just wanted to show you that it can run. So you can use it for media playback and other things like that. But let's get to the main attraction, which would probably be the gaming capabilities. Now, I'm not a heavy-duty gamer. I just wanted to see what this device could do. So GPD loaned me or uh, sent this to me for uh, purposes of review. And uh, let's take a look at a couple of different gaming sort of uh, activities. Uh, actually, you know, before I do that, let me show you two more things. One is there's a little switch here that lets you change these controllers. So I can use this as a mouse. You can see I'm moving a cursor around, and then I can select using one of the shoulder buttons, and then I can say right-click using the other shoulder button. 
So you got mouse functionality. Now I found sometimes switching between mouse functionality and keyboard um, or and uh, trackpad functionality doesn't work perfectly when you're in game. So I'm going to turn that off. And then the other thing I wanted to show you was the uh, the fan. So I don't know how well this is going to come across in the video, but the fan noise is off. That's at medium, and that's at high. So I'm going to set it to, well, I'm just going to leave it on high while we're doing gaming. So let's pull up Batman Arkham Asylum. Now this is a game that's a couple of years old at this point, but I think it does a pretty good job of showing what the system is capable of, in that it can play a full 3D style Windows game. Now it's not actually going to be able to play everything. An Intel Atom X7 processor with Intel HD graphics isn't the highest power system chip that you're going to be able to uh, get, but in a device this small, it works surprisingly well. We got a lot of splash screens to go through here. So that gives you a basic idea of what uh, Batman looks like. Now there's some other games that you might want to try, including uh, sort of Windows Store titles that are things that you can interact with using the touchscreen. So. That's an option you have with this sort of device as well. And you can adjust the screen this way if you want, or hold it this way. So these sort of more casual games are the kind of things that you would expect to be able to work. Oop. That's 
especially like if we're trying to talk and play at the same time. Uh, so these sorts of casual games are the kind of things that you'd expect to be able to work on a device with an Atom processor, but it's a little bit more surprising, I think, that some of your other style games do. Now, in addition to being able to play Windows Store games or sort of Steam games like Batman, uh, it also works pretty nicely as a device for emulation. So let's go ahead and fire up RetroArch. And I'll show you a little bit of that. Start with a little Nintendo version of Galaga. All right, so that's a little Galaga. Let's do something a little bit more advanced. So now we've gone from Nintendo to Nintendo 64. And I have to remember what controls to use. Let's try that again. Load content. All right, so there's a little 3D action in emulation land. And uh, let's do one more thing. It's a little bit more advanced than either of those. And this one's gonna work a little bit better in terms of selecting the game if I plug in this touchpad again. Now it can be a little hard to see what's happening on this tiny, tiny display here, but I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can open a PlayStation game. And then rather than wait through the whole boot screen, I'm going to load a saved state. And show you a little Final Fantasy VII. And move the mouse cursor. So, 
In terms of emulation, I think it works really nicely for uh, for some older style games. So it can handle modern games, it can handle older games. Uh, this isn't a complete review of the capabilities of this device, but it gets at least a couple hours of battery life while gaming. I've noticed it can handle media. It's a uh, it's a pretty impressive little device for three hundred and forty dollars. Um, now you can find some Android or some Windows tablets that are going to be cheaper and have similar hardware, but none that have all of this stuff sort of built in. So overall, I think it's a it's a pretty interesting. Uh, value proposition for $340, the ability to play Windows PC games on the go. Uh, it's not the most powerful system, but you should also be able to use it with things like Steam in-home streaming if you wanted to stream games from a more powerful system and use this mostly as a remote controller. Uh, the buttons feel okay. Uh, the ones on the back feel a little bit sort of on the loose side. The keyboard's not stellar, and that, uh, that fan is pretty audible at times, uh, and it can get a little bit warm, but it basically delivers on the promise of of being able to play PC games, a variety of PC games. Now with an Atom X7 processor and four gigs of RAM, it's not gonna be able to play every game that you wanna throw at it, but at least the ones that I've tried, for the most part, it works. There's some more intensive games, I think, that, are, that run at slower frame rates. So you're gonna to need to be a little bit more careful uh, choosing what games you want to play on it. But uh, again, the GPD Win, pretty interesting device. You can find more details at lilliputing.com or in the description of this video at YouTube. This is Brad Linder with Lilliputing.